Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're finally comparing the gaming performance of AMD's Ryzen 7 and Intel's Core i7 Coffee Lake CPUs. Although we've done this in the past, we're still yet to carry out extensive gaming benchmarks using the GTX 1080 Ti. Previously, all testing was done with the RX Vega 64 graphics card. Not only that, but all previous comparisons were also made before the Meltdown and Spectre security flaws were discovered. As it stands, we're still in the thick of it with these security issues. For those of you unaware, a team of security analysts employed by Google tasked with finding zero day vulnerabilities found three CPU related security risks last year. The team is known as Project Zero and the vulnerabilities that they discovered are now commonly referred to as Spectre and Meltdown. Variant 3, which is technically known as Rogue Data Cache Load, is now commonly referred to as Meltdown. And this variant only impacts Intel processors, and it was mitigated via a Windows update. AMD believes that its processors are not susceptible to this variant due to the way their CPUs are designed, and therefore no mitigation is required. That said, the Windows update is still being applied to AMD systems, and the same performance hits suffered when testing the Intel systems can be seen. Thankfully though, the Meltdown patch had little to basically no impact on gaming performance, though it does degrade storage performance just a little bit. The real problem for both AMD and Intel is the spectra of vulnerabilities, variant 1 being bounds check bypass and variant 2 branch target injection. Starting with AMD, they believe variant 1 can be contained with an operating system update and say Microsoft's working on rolling those updates right now. Variant 2 is also an issue for AMD processors. AMD has stated they believe their CPU architectures make it difficult to exploit variant 2, but they'll continue to work closely with the industry on this threat. They go on to say that optional microcode updates will be available to their customers and partners for Ryzen and Epic processors starting this week. So that was actually meant to commence last week. As it stands, AMD nor their board partners can give me any information on these updates. From what I can tell, nothing's actually in the works for B350 and X370 boards at the moment, but no one's really telling me anything, so I have no additional information on the situation. So right now, for Ryzen users, you can update using the latest Windows patch, but there will likely be more updates to come. As for Intel, it seems to be a much messier situation. Meltdown has been mitigated via the Windows update, but Spectra still remains a big problem. All the major board partners have now issued BIOS updates intended to mitigate variant 2, branch target injection. We tested this a few weeks ago now and found that for the most part, games were only around 3-5% to slower, while storage performance took a massive nosedive. Since then, countless users and media outlets have confirmed those findings, so we need to do more testing to see what this ultimately means for desktop users. As for Variant 1, which AMD think they are mostly safe from, Intel is yet to address at all, and as I understand it, they are more vulnerable than AMD is. Worse still, apparently, even after addressing Variant 2 with the BIOS update that destroyed storage performance, it's reported that it doesn't actually solve the issue. Google has since come out and said they have a solution for Variant 2 that doesn't impact performance. Their method uses software patches rather than disabling the affected CPU features. According to Google, their patch code named RET Pauline has a negligible impact on performance, particularly when compared to Microsoft and Intel's fixes. This is obviously something Intel and its clients will no doubt want to take advantage of, so we can probably expect to see more updates in the not too distant future. Okay, so now that we've gotten all that out of the way, it's quite clear that neither AMD or Intel are out of the woods yet, and that performance we're seeing today could likely change in the near future. What many of you, or rather, a whole heap of you have been handing me for over the last few weeks as a comparison between Ryzen and 8th generation core processors. So today we're comparing the Ryzen 7 1800X with the Core i7 8700K. And for this test, the focus is on stock out of the box performance. The Core i7 8700K processor has been tested on the Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard using BIOS version F5L, which includes the updated CPU microcode intended to mitigate variant 2 of Spectre. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 7 1800X has been tested on the ASRock X370 Type-G, and so far AMD hasn't issued any BIOS updates. Both the AMD and Intel CPUs were tested using DDR4 3200CL14 memory, with the latest version of Windows fully patched. The graphics card of choice this time is the GeForce GTX 1080 and testing takes place at both 1080p and 1440p, using a range of quality presets. We have a number of modern CPU demanding titles to look at, so let's get to it. 
First up, we have Assassin's Creed Origins, and here we see at 1080p using the medium quality settings that the 8700K is 18% faster or 23% faster if you look at the 1% low data. The margin closes up as we increase the quality settings, and once we hit Ultra, the 8700K is just 13% faster. That's still a decent margin, but with both CPUs maintaining over 50 FPS at all times, the experience was much the same using either CPU. Of course, 1080 Ti owners are more likely to game at 1440p, and here the 8700K was just 6% faster on average, though it was 11% faster for the 1% low result. Obviously, the reason why the margin closed from 23% down to 11% for the 1% low result is because as we increase the quality settings, the GPU continued to limit the performance further. Moving on to Ashes of the Singularity, we find a similar story. Using the medium quality settings, the 8700K was as much as 22% faster, but that margin was more than halved at the same resolution using the maximum visual quality settings. Then at 1440p, the 8700K was just 6% faster. Testing with Battlefield 1 provides some interesting results. Regardless of resolution and quality settings, when paired with the GTX 1080 Ti, the Ryzen 7 processor allowed for a 1% result of between 100 and 110 FPS. In fact, we only saw an 8% variance. Meanwhile, the variance for the Intel CPU was as much as 38%, and while it was at least 20% faster at 1080p, it was 2% slower at 1440p. That said, at 1440p, the 8700K was still 8% faster when comparing the average frame rate. Right, so next up we have Call of Duty World War II, and this title unfortunately doesn't play that nicely with Ryzen CPUs. Of course, the resulting performance is still excellent, as we saw well over 100 FPS at all times, even at 1440p. However, here the 8700K was still at least 17% faster, and that's obviously a pretty significant margin. Moving on to Dawn of War 3, we find the Ryzen 7 1800X is good for around 70 to 72 FPS for the minimum, and 109 FPS for the average. This meant the 8700K was up to 20% faster, but by the time we reached the 1440p resolution, that margin was reduced to just 10%. Deus Ex Mankind Divider was testing using the DirectX 11 API because we're using a GTX 1080 Ti. Here the 8700K was up to 33% faster using the medium quality settings, and then 19% faster with the ultra quality settings, though it was just 9% faster for the 1% low result. Oddly, moving to 1440p allowed the Ryzen 7 CPU to hit the lead, beating the 8700K by a slim margin. Dirt 4 is one of the few recently released AAA titles that was designed with Ryzen CPUs in mind. Although the 1800X gets stomped using the medium quality settings at 1080p, using the ultra quality settings brings Ryzen back into play. Then at 1440p we again see slightly stronger 1% low results from the AMD processor. Here we have another racing game, F1 2017, and this time we find things mostly going in favour of the Blue Man Group. The 8700K was up to 22% faster, though with the ultra quality settings that margin was reduced to 10% for the average frame rate, but 16% for the 1% low. Then at 1440p we see very similar performance, though the 8700K still offered a better minimum result. The Project Cars franchise has never been a friend to AMD, and we see that here with the 8700K, which was around 30% faster throughout the 1080p testing. Thanks to a GPU bottleneck, things close up at 1440p, and here the Intel CPU was just 5% faster. When testing with Rainbow Six Siege, we see that the 8700K was up to 23% faster, though it was just 12% faster when using the ultra quality settings at 1080p. Then once we hit 1440p, the margin is reduced to 2%, while the 1800X provided a better 1% low result based on a 3-run average. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is the most recently released game I've tested with, and while there will be those that complain about it being included because of the loot box controversy and all that, it's still a good quality game that's very well made, and for now, you can't actually pay to win, so I figure we should probably just hold fire. Anyway, as I said, the game's very well made, and we see that it does a great job of utilising Ryzen when compared to many of the games looked at already. Here the 8700K is at most just 14% faster, and that's pretty impressive when you consider that it was clocked at least 13% higher in this test, so that is a really good result for AMD. Once we jump to 1440p, the 8700K is still 10% faster, but as I said, given the difference in clock speed, that's really not a bad margin. Finally, the last game we're going to look at is Total War Warhammer 2, and here we find some very competitive results indeed. Although the 1800X was around 4% slower for the medium and high quality tests, it was 6% faster for the ultra quality test and 14% faster once we hit 1440p. So again, another title where the Ryzen CPU manages to come out on top at 1440p. 
Okay, so before I summarize all the data we just went through, uh, let's quickly look back at the numbers found previously when testing with Vega 64 Liquid. Here we have the low resolution 720p results using the ultra type quality settings. And here the 8700K was on average 19% faster than the 1800X or 21% if we look at the 1% low results. Those margins were reduced to 7% at 1080p, 10% for the 1% low result. And again, this is with the ultra type quality settings enabled. Then finally at 1440p, the 8700K was only 3% faster when comparing the average frame rate. I happen to think the testing done previously with Vega 64 was actually quite interesting and gave a different perspective to the usual, you know, testing done with an NVIDIA GPU. For example, the behavior is quite different when testing games using DirectX 12 with a Radeon GPU, and this does often play more into the hands of Ryzen. Still, I got pretty slammed by quite a few people for testing with Vega 64 Liquid, uh, claiming that my results were misleading and that I should have tested exclusively with a GTX 1080 Ti. I had always planned to revisit these tests with the 1080 Ti, and I made note of that in the original video, but given the Vega benchmarks included 720p results, I wasn't quite sure what all the fuss was about. Anyway, I've now done the 1080 Ti testing, we've looked at that, so let's go over all the data again and summarize that quickly and see what the picture looks like now. Here's a full breakdown providing the average results across the dozen games tested. Using the medium quality settings, the 8700K was seen to be 21% faster than the 1800X when comparing the 1% low data. Even I was a bit surprised when I realized that this is the exact figure we saw when comparing these CPUs with Vega 64 at 720p. What would you know? I'll just wipe away that smug look and move on. The ultra quality results at 1080p showed the 8700K to be 15% faster on average and 13% for the 1% low result. For the average frame rate, this is a bit different to what we saw with the slower Vega 64 graphics card, but at 1080p, that's not entirely surprising. And the 1% low margins were actually very similar. Previously with Vega, we saw a 10% margin. Then finally at 1440p, the 8700K was 5% faster on average and 2% for the 1% low result. Previously when testing with Vega 64, we found the 8700K was 3% faster on average and 2% for the 1% low result. So again, very similar findings this time around. Of course, this time we do also have the meltdown and spectra patches applied and this will be slowing the 8700K down by three to 5%. So I'm aware that this is helping to reduce the margin. Right, so there you have it. Not a lot has changed since we last did this kind of test. Uh, for a no compromise type gaming solution, just maximum frame rates, best performance you can possibly get, the 8700K is really the way to go. That's uh, simply the best option available right now. But if you plan to play at 1440p or at possibly an even higher resolution, or use a lower end graphics card, the difference between the 8700K and AMD 6 and 8 core Ryzen CPU is going to be negligible. For productivity type work, it really depends on the application, but we found mostly that when comparing the CPUs in the out of the box form, that is to say, before any overclocking takes place, the 1800X is generally faster. Uh, with both CPUs overclocked, that means the 1800X at 4 GHz and then the 8700K at 5 GHz, they are quite similar in most heavy workloads. Price-wise, the 1800X is about $20 cheaper, but most smart shoppers will probably pick up the R7 1700 for just $290 and then just overclock it to somewhere between 3.8 and 4 gigahertz. At that price, the 8-core Ryzen CPU is really an awesome buy, though if you can wait till April, I'd certainly do so because at that point we will have the second generation Ryzen parts and we'll get to see what they bring to the table along with the 400 series chipsets. Getting back to the testing in this video, I didn't cover overclocking, but it honestly doesn't really make that much difference. The 1800X is only a few percent faster when overclocked, and then the 8700K, well, that does see a nice boost when not GPU limited. But of course, for the most part, you will find yourself GPU limited with ultra type settings, and therefore you will see little to no improvement even at 1080p. In fact, I've already shown hundreds of benchmark runs on the channel using these very games with the 8700K clocked at between 4.8 and 5.2 gigahertz. You can expect about a 7% boost at 1080p using the medium quality settings with just a 1-2% to boost at 1080p and 1440p using the ultra quality settings. So for those of you who are going to beat your chest claiming that the 8700K has to be overclocked and when it is it will just devastate the Ryzen CPU, well... That's certainly not true when using ultra quality settings with a GTX 1080 Ti. 
Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Not a lot has changed, but honestly, we weren't really expecting it to. Intel remains the king for performance, while AMD still provides the most bang for your buck. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, and be sure to let me know what you think below in the comment section. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.